Yeah, I remember it was a group of four people. Yeah, we got there and, and the girl just never showed up. Uh, the visibility was terrible, so we couldn't see. She was, she was off the cliff. Welcome to the death road. This used to be the deadliest road in the world. Now they've created a bypass down the other side of the valley, but it's still pretty dangerous. So <laughs> we're doing it on mountain bikes, so not as dangerous as taking a car or a motorcycle. Still gonna be pretty spicy. <laughs> and it used to be a two-way highway, so. And we're going with the best company, Gravity. So they take us up to, I think, 12,500 feet. And the total descent should be about 10,000 feet over the day. All downhill. All downhill. So <laughs> it's not too much work for me. <laughs> yeah, we were feeling, honestly, a little bit jaded and sick and whatnot. I was. And we just kind of thought, okay, let's just do it while we're here. Yeah. You, know, you don't want to let these things go by. So Rob already gave us a solid recommendation for this company, this activity, and now it's our turn to try the death road. <laughs> the last one downs it, actually. <laughs> <laughs> no, thank you. <laughs> so soaked. It's really, really cold. It's colder than I thought, so I'm really glad they gave us all this gear. Here we go. To get to the death road, we're actually going to take the new road for a little while and then we're going to start on the old dirt road. But this road has cars on it, so it does make it a little bit more dangerous. And this is 14,600 feet elevation. We're going all the way down. Okay, here we go on the death road part. <laughs> wow, you guys, check this out. This is the death road part. You can see it winding over here, and this pretty straight down. Not super safe, but definitely some adrenaline. So we've already came down this whole part here, down here, down here, and this is the steepest cliff. There goes Emily. That's gnarly. Apparently 400 meters straight down. This is the deadliest part of the road.
well, we took our own little break here to see the view behind us. I have had so much more fun than I thought I would. I thought I would be super scared the whole time. I mean, it's called Death Road. <laughs> I've had a lot, a lot of fun and it's not a lot of exercise. So it's a really good transition from being in a hospital bed to being active. <laughs> I feel very good. Yeah, since it's all downhill, it just feels like you're taking a nice, easy bike ride. Yeah. And the brakes are excellent. Oh. So you can just kind of go at your own pace. Yeah. And with our group, there's been some fast people ahead and some slow people behind, so we can just kind of do whatever the hell we want. Yeah, we've been so nice just in the middle. <laughs> so it's nothing minor, but it's nothing insane either. You can no. really go at your own pace and yeah, just a beautiful day. I'm so glad we did this. I'm glad, you know, we did the local thing. That's yeah. always the right thing to do. Yeah. <laughs> like when we were back in Peru and we thought, oh, should we just go to Bolivia or should we go back to Al Sangate? Or even the Amazon. Yeah, I'm really I'm glad. glad. we're stopped. Whenever we change plans just to do what's around, that's the best way of van. Yeah. <laughs> you shame fell off? Yeah. Oops. Well, we got that bike patched up quick. A little bit easier than on a BMX when you have a derailleur. You can just pull to the side. Gives you a ton of slack in the chains to toss it on. Whoa, this part's gnar. Now we've come down so far that we're hearing tropical birds, there's banana trees. It's just really nice to be warm after being up in La Paz for two weeks and being super cold. The bus is so far behind us, I gotta keep wearing this. <laughs> oh well, I guess that's an accomplishment. All done with the biking part of the death road. We did it safe and sound. Wow, so whenever I read online that we would be going to an animal refuge, I, I was a little nervous because sometimes, you know, they aren't very fair to the animals, but this place is so great. I'm so happy we came. Are you serious? I've never seen that. These animals were victims of trafficking. They were found in an airport trying to be smuggled out of Bolivia or in homes as pets. Bolivia does not let trafficked animals back into the wild, so these animals will live out their days in a low-stress environment with a lot of room to explore. It's pretty obvious that everyone cares for these animals. I'm glad we did the extra tour to go and see the bears and the big cats because it's so hard to see them in the wild. And She was rescued from the black market in La Paz City. After the bike ride, they take you here to this reserve where they saved all these animals from trafficking, from people who had them as illegal pets, from black markets. It's a really nice place here. It's the humans in the cage here. The animals go where they please. At least for the non-jaguars. <laughs> What's your step? 2010, <laughs> I was working in another company. And yeah, I remember it was a group of four people. It was three guys from Poland and one Israeli girl. And at some point where we had the sandwich actually, the waterfalls, yeah, we got there and, and the girl just never showed up. We drove up to see if we could find her. I remember it was a very super cloudy day. Visibility was terrible, so we couldn't see that she was she was off the cliff until I finally saw a couple of marks on the like on the edge on the dirt a couple of the stones that were recently moved and that was the only clue we had because she fell on a spot that nobody could see and it was so dense visibility it's so bad that it would have been very hard to to see somebody going off the edge actually I was in that company and I was also kind of inexperienced so I I climbed down with no ropes and nothing but the main thing at that point was try to save her, right? 
when I finally hit the bottom, which was a hundred meters more or less, or a little more, yeah, I got there and she, she was already gone by the oh. time I, I, I found her. Maybe the darkest day I had, it was very traumatic. So I decided to stop doing this for because I didn't know. I didn't want to be on the road again. But yeah, after some time, I don't know, things come down and I decided to start guiding again. But you've had like thousands of rides that went completely fine and... Yeah, yeah. That's that's why after like 15 years we're still doing this, you know? It's, yeah. So it's such a, such a cool thing to do and in yeah. this pandemic we, we had to find different jobs and different things they are not as nearly as fun as these. <laughs> <laughs> we, we missed it a lot, so... Time to head back to the van after an awesome day. Thanks to our French traveler friends for watching some Breathe and Grim for us. Morning, guys. Man, that death road was sweet. We had some good sleep last night, and now we're planning to head out of La Paz. Really excited to see what's ahead. A little bit more Bolivia, but even more excited for Chile and ski season. We're gonna go to Santiago de Esquile. We got to run the gauntlet of coal. On the way there is the salt flats and the temperatures get down to about 15 degrees at night. Ooh, we've already been super cold here in La Paz for two weeks. Right now I have, you know, tons of coats on. I even have the hot water bottle inside there. <laughs> we have this really sweet gasoline powered heater but it doesn't work at high elevation and this is 12,000 feet as is the Salar de Oyuni, the biggest salt flats in the world. I'm gonna have to do a little van project before we get on the road. If temperatures are gonna get that low, our water system freezes up. I have this uh, pretty cool stuff called 12 volt self-regulating heat tape. It's basically like a cable. I removed it because we haven't used it in forever. We don't have that many fuses, but it's time to reinstall. So basically I have to put that cable from the water tank exit to the sink with some zip ties to hold it there and then connect the electrical. There's still a switch underneath the sink that used to be for it. It's not a hard project, but with any electrical, you just really gotta concentrate and do it right. Got all the tools out, we'll need, check this out. This cable here is the self-regulating heat tape. One end is just terminated. I'll put some extra electrical there. This one has the terminal on it that I did a long time ago. So that exposes the electrical pretty easy. So I'll go to a positive and negative, put a switch on it. I got the zip ties here. All my electrical things for stripping cable, uh, extra cable we might need, the multimeter. It's nice that our van has two side doors. Basically this is the faucet. So we're gonna run the heat tape from there over here to the pump, down the line that goes to the tank. And then for the electrical, here's the wires ready to connect to. And these two go to the switch I got up there. So it should be pretty easy, but you never know. <laughs> so on the inside here, I'll remove this gray water tank. Here's where the water tank exit is. And we'll run this heat tape up here and up to the faucet. And then the last piece to the puzzle is the van's electrical system. So since the electrical is here, that's why we put all the outlets here. It just makes it easy. Up through the wall, goes to the solar panels. Through the back, goes to the batteries and the inverter. But we do have the remote switch for the inverter here. And a Bluetooth thing to just check it without having to open this. There's the fuse box there. No fuse in this one, so I believe it's that. And I can't see from the cable comes out here is labeled and that sticker verifies that that is the cable. So we're gonna be good. I'll just have to look up what size fuse it was again. We got plenty of those. So that cable there runs behind the fridge, under there. We cut a special channel in the back there and comes out over here. So before I go all the trouble of installing this, I'm just testing it out kind of, and I feel this getting hot. So let's check the fuse, make sure it's not burned out. 100% sweet. So that heat tape's still working. 
So here at this end, you can kind of see how it works. There's this outer sheath here that uh, heats up and then the inner cables carry the electricity. If one portion of it's already warmed up, then uh, it won't heat that area and it moves on to the next. So that's the self-regulating part of the self-regulating heat tape. Pretty fancy stuff and the amount of amps it draws depends on the length. Here it's pretty short section, so it doesn't use a ton of power. Okay, so it's probably been an hour since I took the last clip. Check this out. So here we got the heat tape, nice and zip tied to the line. Up here, around the pump, you can see the heat tape goes around the pump, keep that nice and warm. Comes connected to the line here, winds around with it. Here's the end of it, which I'll secure up here. Here's the cables for the van's electrical. This is, nothing's live right now here. But on the positive side, I'll run it to this switch here, which is up there, easy to hit. And that will go to the other side of this. Time to do a bunch of wiring. To make all these connections, I use these kind of things. Put the two cables together, nice, twisted. And then you twist this on the end, and put electrical tape around it. Of course, we want to insulate the exposed. These cables are looking a bit haggard, so I'm going to cut off the ends and strip it back to get really nice conductor. Show you what that looks like. So here you see this one's already been used. So I'm going to cut it here and take off this part. Here you see I've already cut off the end. Time to strip this off. And this is the tool you use to do that. So here you cut off the end and then depending on what gauge or thickness of wire, I got plenty of extra cable here if I mess up. This is how you want to see them. Nice and clean. None got cut as I was stripping them. Split these into two, that into two, braid them, and then braid everything together. Cap it, electrical tape it. That's a wrap. You can see we got the fire extinguisher just in case here, but this heat tape is feeling nice and warm. It really warms up good. And it stops using power when it's warm. Really fancy stuff. Heat tape with the zip ties runs up there, comes over here, around here. And then up here, got the electrical connections. The positive side goes over there to the switch. Everything's nice and cable tied up to keep it from moving as we go on these crazy roads. Got the electrical tape on all the, the caps to extra insulate that. So that's really awesome that we don't have to run the heater constantly to keep the water system from freezing. But that will be the next step of ski season winterization. Getting this heater working again once we get all that done we're ski season ready since we've been getting sick we cleaned out the whole water system recently put some uh, stuff used for cleaning vegetables in the water tank ran it through the system kept having to put fresh water to, to get that all cleaned out end of an era here we're leaving la paz we're heading out and going on a nice long road trip well quite a few hours out we're excited to keep moving on i'm excited to keep getting better along the way thanks so much for joining us on this epic adventure please share this video if you enjoyed it we have a patreon if you'd like to support us a little more see you guys next time